My name is Michael Gordon. I am a debut author. It is a pleasure to be here this evening. And I propose a question. I propose a very, very important question. How does one become resilient? Being tough is easier said than done. I can attest to how life knocks you down. How does someone rise up again? Surely some people do, but how? How does one overcome or help draw out that toughness in a loved one? I present to you a formula that helped me in my darkest time, a bit of linguistic math. I hope that you can plug your own life into the equation and find strength. I can't promise that everything will be okay tomorrow. Sometimes it won't, but I can promise you will become strong. I present to you the R formula. As you can see, Y here is R, and we can see what R is. R is the ability to overcome great hindrances. It's toughness. It's the ability to overcome in order to achieve one's goals. What we have to do is solve for everything else in our life. As you can see, adaptation, introspection, initiative, healing, and acceptance are the key components to this equation are the key variables. But as we attempt to solve the equation, remember that it's PEMDAS, meaning parentheses come first. So let's jump right into introspection and adaptation. You have to have a great deep understanding of your circumstance. And for me, from ages seven to 17, I was a homeless youth. For as long as I can remember, I have been whipped and punished every time a glimmer of light has shone through my horizon. I've slept outside on park benches, staircases. I've lived in shelter after shelter, mostly in San Diego but I was homeless in Virginia in the snow twice. I was homeless in Oregon, Portland, Utah, Tennessee, Arkansas, Sacramento. I was even homeless in the shelters with the Katrina victims in Houston, along what I coined our own underground railroad. If you've ever experienced hunger, then you understand exactly what I mean. How it feels to starve when everyone else around you is eating. It's like striking a match and dropping it down your throat and it hits nothing but gasoline. And every night my hunger set me on fire. Homelessness was as a noose around my neck that tightened with every step that I took. I could not breathe. But what led me there? You see, homelessness is caused not by a lack of money per se, but a lack of resources. I had no family to help on my mom or dad's side. Most didn't know that I existed. With my mother disabled and near death and my father incarcerated for murder, I was truly a ghost in the system. Nowhere to store food, nowhere to sleep, transient, desolate, destitute, whether I liked it or not. That's how the world described me. I didn't have to agree. However, it was important for me to comprehend which omitted resources and what chain of events placed me in that horrid position. 
And then I had to adapt. To adapt is to survive. Okay, I had to go to food lines, shelters. I had to panhandle to wash my clothes. I grew a thick skin from being laughed at, teased, humiliated, all for not having a home. I had to adapt to my environment in order to survive it. Otherwise, I die in Paris like so many unhoused before me. So let's look at our, let's review our formalized variables of introspection and adaptation. For me, the introspective look was living below poverty due to that lack of resources. And then I had to adapt food lines, attain resources. I had to have the will to affect change. Now let's review our equation with our inputted variables. Now, most people want to jump straight into the initiative after they dive into an understanding, after they adapt, they want to jump straight into the initiative. But remember, it's PEMDAS. And so let's dive into acceptance plus healing. I understood my situation. I did what I had to do, but I didn't like it. I was angry. Maybe my circumstances were a mistake. Why was it me? I did nothing wrong. I didn't commit a crime. Why did I have to be born unlucky? Maybe a fairy godparent would come down. Maybe one day I'd wake up with a warm bed and food in my belly and it would all be a dream. Or or maybe that was my harsh reality, that there would be no heroes. You see, I too am a victim of the rages of society. Hate crimes from being unhoused left me beat with three fractures cracked into my face, gas bubbles under each eye with bruised ribs. I was left unrecognizable and unconscious, beat and bloody on the same streets in which I slept. And that was how I survived for 10 years of my life. In my soul, I knew I was no different than my neighbor. But through their eyes, I accepted that I was a homeless boy. And I had to heal from that. I let my heart sink in my chest. The pain, the grief, I bore it all. And it hurt so much. It hurt so much. The foreseeable future, cloudy. I was no longer trying to be Superman. You see, growing up, you are taught to be strong. Show no weakness to bludgeon your way through obstacles. The Superman motif works well until you reach your respective kryptonite and it breaks you. For you, it could be math class, athletics, mental health, immigration. For me, it was homelessness. I could not Superman my way through. I almost died. My mother almost died. My sister almost die. I had to try a new way to heal, like the comic character Wolverine. Heal from the bumps, the bruises, the humiliation. I felt all the pain until one day being homeless didn't hurt as much. One day, once the tears were done, I could see the sun. From then on, I knew whenever I shed a tear, it wasn't water running down, but restrained ambition leaking through my eyes. Now, let's review our formalized variable, factoring our narrative. For me, accepting life was going to be tough and impoverished. Inhaling, feeling the emotion, the confusion, the grief, letting it hurt. And let's review our input equation. We have 
our introspective look of the situation, our adaptation. We have our acceptance and healing from our harsh reality. And now you want to multiply that times your initiative. Our initiative variable, self-drive. You see, I did not want to perpetuate the plight of impoverished people. I wanted to succeed and exceed the expectations of those in need. I wanted to break free the chains of homelessness and change the circumstance that I was born into. But first, I would have to change my perception of life. I didn't have the luxury of deciphering whether the glass was half full or half empty. I just knew I needed water inside, meaning that I needed sustainable resources. I knew I was a homeless boy, understood why, subsequently understood how to close the gap. I needed to be my family's hero. It's, it's not something people told me I had to do. It became something experience taught me, necessity brought me. You can curse at the world or you can start slowly digging yourself out of an unjust hole. See, I knew my route to success would be harder than most, my obstacles stronger, my journey longer, and no, it was not fair. But for me, the alternative was death. So at 16, I got a job as a custodian and even worse, it was for my own high school. So you can imagine my self-esteem at the time. My student peers saw me on my hands and knees, cleaning up feces, wiping up urine, scraping gum off the ground. Trash bags fell, sour milk spilled on my only pair of jeans. People laughed at me, teased me, because I had to consistently overcome. I was a homeless custodian at 16, and it was the most humiliating endeavor. However, I knew that hard work paid off. It always did, and it always will. With monies earned, I was able to move my family out of our car and into our first apartment in years. And then la later able to work and receive a full scholarship to UCLA, graduate and come back and enter the homeless services workforce to be that hand I wish I had. Now, let's look at our formulized variable for initiative. For me, it was work and school. Work and school was key to my upward mobility. I worked in school every day. Not that that was fair, but it's what I had to do to overcome. Now let's look at our input equation with our solved variables. For me, for me, understanding that I was living below poverty without resources. Understanding I had to adapt to that environment. And for me, it was accepting I was a homeless boy and sometimes crying about it, releasing that ambition and multiplying that times my initiative. And it all equals Y, R, which equals becoming permanently housed and receiving my college education. Now let's review a blank R formula. Again, for you, it may not be homelessness. It may be math. It may be sports, immigration, foster care, obesity, abuse. Plug your own journey into the R formula. Be willing to heal, willing to work hard, and you will come out tough. You will be resilient, and you will survive. I want to share an image with you, an uh, image that I take with me everywhere that I go. You can see myself and my mother in that car I aforementioned with everything we ever owned in the background. 
You can see my hand raised. You can see my hat on so people didn't see me. We had newspapers in the front parked right behind the shelter because I was too old to go in. And my mother took this picture. I always ask, mom, why did you take this picture to show us at our lowest point? And she said, son, it's so that you will never forget. And I have never forgotten. And I hope that you can use this R formula to overcome. Again, my name is Michael Gordon. I am a debut author, and I want to thank you for sharing this evening with me.